Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and in this lesson, we're going to be learning a piece called Arabesque by the German composer and pianist Johann Friedrich Franz Bergmüller. <laughs> you know, we really got to get this guy a nickname. Guys, any ideas? Uh, Johnny? Uh, Franzi? Bergy? Uh, <laughs> let's just go with Bergmüller. Sounds good. Aw, I liked Bergy. The title of the piece we'll start learning today is arabesque. The word arabesque originally was used as a term for a fancy kind of Islamic art, dating all the way back to the 9th century. It has lots of delicate, intertwining patterns. In music, a piece called arabesque will tend to sound both delicate and fancy, like the arabesque we're listening to now, which is by composer Robert Schumann, who lived around the same time as Bergmuller. And now, let's listen to Bergmuller's arabesque. Here's the sheet music for arabesque. Let's go down our checklist of things we always check before learning a new piece. Let's check out our tempo indication, which says allegro scherzando. Let's say that together. Ready? Go. Allegro scherzando. You probably remember that allegro means fast. Scherzando is a new term that means playful. It comes from an, an Italian word that means to joke. So it's kind of a playful allegro, playful and fast. We have our treble clef and bass clef. And then next up, we want to check for our key signature. Do you see any sharps and flats here? No. So from our ladder of fifths or fourths, when we have zero sharps or flats, what two keys could we be in? We could either be in C major or A minor. How can we tell? Well, we have to look at the first and the last note. Let's check out this first chord. Can you figure out what chord that is? Try to play it on your piano. Pause the video if you need to and figure out what chord that is. If you said A minor, you're correct. Because we start on an A minor chord, we also finish on an A minor chord. If you check the last chord, you can know that we are in the key of A minor. Then let's check our time signature. Time signature is 2-4. You'll recall that 2-4 is just another way of saying two quarter note beats per measure. That four on the bottom stands for quarter notes. We're going to have two of those in every measure. And you can see that right away. One, two, one, two. We have a bar line after every two quarter note beats. Now, scanning ahead, you'll notice this repeat sign facing forward. When it faces forward, we just go right past it. And then let's review what we do with the first and a second ending. We see this little box up here, or little bracket with a one inside. That's called a first ending. You're only allowed to go inside there the first time. You hit the repeat, that's a teleport station, back to this repeat sign. And then the second time, you're not allowed to go back in the first ending. You have to teleport straight to the second ending. Okay, so watch that path one more time. You go forward, forward into the first ending. Teleport back to the repeat. Forward, forward, skip the first ending to the second ending. Now today we're going to be learning the right hand part. 
In these two measures, you can see these whole rests, which means do nothing for the whole measure. The right-hand part begins here in measure 3. Now, you'll see these 16th notes, this flagged 8th note with an 8th rest. These rhythms may look a little complicated, so let's come to the heartbeat mat to practice them. Now, in this piece, we have a 2-4 time signature, which tells us we have two quarter note beats per every measure. So if our rhythm were just quarter note, quarter note, then we need a bar line, then quarter note, quarter note, another bar line. Okay. However, in this piece, the right hand is going to be playing 16th notes. Remember, if we go twice as fast as a quarter note, we get eighth notes, but then twice as fast as eighth notes is 16th notes. 16th notes go so fast, you can fit four of them in one beat. If our beat goes this fast, ta, 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 16th notes go ticky, 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 ticky. You get four sounds inside one beat. Ticky, ticky, ta, ta, ta. In measures three and four of the right hand, you'll see this rhythm. Remember, four 16th notes fit inside beat one. Ticky, ticky, t, rest. So an eighth note takes up half of the beat, and this eighth rest can take up the other half of the beat. So it's like one and two and, one and two and. Can you try saying that with me? Let's add counts to the beat. Remember, each half of the beat can be one and two and, one and two and. We're giving a name for each half of the beat. With sixteenth notes, you can fit two sounds into one half of the beat. So it would be one and, one and, one and two and, one and two and. Now you count with me and tap the rhythm on your own. Tap with me and count, go. One and two and, one and two and. Good, and this is a rhythm we're going to see throughout this piece, so it's important we get it correct. Let's do it one more time. Ready, go. One and two and, one and two and. With rhythm words, it's ticky ticky t rest, ticky ticky t rest. This is another rhythm you'll see in measures 7 and 8. We start with the rest on beat 1, and then we get this eighth note on the AND of beat 1. 1 AND 2 AND. Let's practice this rhythm. Say the 1 while you lift your hand, and then AND 2 AND. Ready? AND GO. 1 AND 2 AND. One more time. Ready? GO. 1 AND 2 AND. Then over here we have 1 AND two and. This time we play the note first and then the rest. One and two and. Try it with me, go. One and two and. All together we have one and two and, one and two and. Let's try this a few times. Count the beat out loud while we tap the rhythm. This time I'll count two beats to get us started. I'll say one and two and one. And remember one is a rest. Count with me. Ready, go. One and two and one and two and one and two and. One more time. Ready, go. One and two and one and two and one and two and. All right, take a look at the first note the right hand plays in the score. And can you tell me the letter name of that first note? If you said A, you're correct. And up above you'll see a finger one, so try to place your finger one on A. Here's my middle C, so we're just up at the next available A. Now, what I'd like you to do is press pause and see if you can figure out measures three and four, these first two measures that the right hand plays. Try though to figure out the notes on your own, and then we'll try it together. All right. Now, you'll see that we step up twice, so A, B, C, B, A, then we step right back down. Three notes stepping up, and then steps right back down. Ticky, ticky, T, rest. Ticky, ticky, T, rest. Now you try. Good. Now, let's, as you learn the notes of a piece, try to do more than just play the right notes and the right rhythms. Try to also play the right style, so you learn it correctly from the beginning. Notice that there's this slur mark, see that curved line that connects all the notes? But the last note has a staccato, so that means we'll play all the notes legato, but we finish with the staccato. 
So it's very smooth. And then that last note ends with a quick release. And to get that quick release, let your wrist lift up. You don't want to you don't want to drop hard into that last note. It's not an accent. It's a staccato. And because it comes at the end of a phrase, you want to gently lift your wrist as you play that note so it has a light, crisp sound. Now you try. It's also important to notice any directions in the music, like this word here, leggero. You know, whenever you're learning a new piece, if you come across a word you don't know, you can go online and look it up. Or if you have a music dictionary, that can help too. Leggero means lightly. So you're going to play this lightly, delicately. Remember, this is an arabesque. Now, try, press pause and work on those first two measures and work on letting your wrist lift up as you play that staccato. So it's a light, gentle sound. Pause to work on those first two measures, then press play to go on. Now when we get to measure five, what's the first note that we play? Can you tell me the name of this note? If you said D, you're correct. But it's asking for a finger one, and that's smart because you can see that there's five notes stepping up. So we have to shift finger one up to D to be able to play that pattern. Will you try that? Good. Now look at the first note of measure six and tell me the letter name of that note. If you said A, you're correct. Look, it's on the first ledger line above our flag F, which is here. So finger one is now on A. And we have five notes stepping up. Now you try. So we're getting really high now. Okay, so back to measure three we have. And notice we have that crescendo mark in measure five, so we're getting louder up to a forte here in measure six. Okay, press pause and work on measures three through six on your own, and then press play to go on. Now you'll notice, now that we're getting to more advanced music, our hands are going to be moving around a lot. So it's really important you have a good familiarity with notes on the staff and where they are on the piano. If you need extra practice with reading notes on the staff, you can use one of our online games to help practice a quick mastery of where you are on the staff and where that is on the piano. Now coming into measure seven, can you tell me the letter name of this first note we play here? If you said E, you're correct. So finger two comes to E now. Okay, notice we have a one and two and one. Now you try. So we have a rest on beat one, one and two and one. Now you try. Good, and after we do that, we switch to a finger two on D, and that ties across the bar line, so we just play it once, two and one, and two and one, and two and. Now right there we get a sforzando. A sforzando is a composer's way of saying, play that note extra strong like a surprise. It wants to catch the listener off guard. Composers have lots of ways of saying, play this note extra loud. They've got an accent symbol, which you've seen before, like this. There's also this kind of accent called a rooftop accent. That looks like a rooftop. And then there's also a sforzando. They all essentially mean the same thing. If you really want to go crazy, you can even add extra Fs to the sforzando, like this or this. Again, these are the symbols composers use to say, pay attention to this note, it's extra important, play it extra strong. Okay, let's watch this from measure seven again. So you have one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two and. 
Notice how I had to shift there in measure eight and the sforzando. Now press pause and on your own work on those four measures and I'd like you to count the beat out loud. If it's helpful you can write the one and two ands in your music but be sure you're counting out loud while you play otherwise the rhythms in this section may not be correct. So write in the counts, count out loud as you practice measures seven through ten on your own then press play to go on. Now after we play that sforzando it repeats back one more time to the main theme. So now I'd like you to just listen this one time but I do have a job for you. I'd like you to count the beat out loud so you get used to how the notes fit in with the beat. The right hand has a little bit of syncopation so I want you to really be sure where the notes fit with the beat. So I'd like you to count one and two and try it with me go one and two and keep going and one and two 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 and one and keep counting one and two and 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 you know you'll notice that time I went to the second ending and I skipped right over that first ending to go to the second ending where we have a C up to a high C so we reach up that octave and you'll notice it's marked with a slur that curve line can be called a slur which means play legato but it ends the legato on that staccato note. One and two. Now will you try the second ending? One and two. Your turn. Now here in measures seven and eight make sure you're following the notation carefully. You'll notice we have a staccato then a legato section with another staccato at the end. So we have staccato then a slur into staccato rest and then an accent. There's a lot to keep track of in there. Bum, ba, da, da. Accent. To get a good accent you can just drop your hand on that note. Fall from above to give it a nice strong accented sound. And then same on this sforzando. You can even brace your finger one and finger three together to give you a little extra power on that note. Now on your own press pause and work on the entire A section right hand alone. Work on having a nice light sound and a good little wrist float on that last staccato. Your wrist actually lifts up as you play the staccato. And then accent drop down and then a really strong sforzando. Again bracing your fingers together for extra power if you want. Press pause to work on that entire section right hand with counting the beat out loud then press play to go on. Once you feel like you have the notes down it would be good to do some metronome practice. And I recommend you use the metronome to represent the eighth note instead of the quarter note. So in other words the metronome is going to be ticking one and two and 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 Second ending, one and two and. I was at about 104 for my metronome. Started at, you know, maybe around that, maybe a little slower. You could start at 88, 92, 96, and then gradually increase that speed. 
once you can play it confidently and with no missed notes. Great work today learning the right hand part for the A section of Arabesque by Johann Friedrich, uh, I mean by Bergmuller. Happy practicing and see you next time. Take this one here, and bingo! Hi, Scuba. What are you doing with these repeat signs? Well, Mr. Hoffman gave me a great idea when he was talking about how repeat signs are like teleport stations. I thought maybe we could make a real teleport station using these big repeat signs. Well, how does that work? Well, I haven't tested it yet, but if you walk this way into this repeat sign, it should send you right back to that other repeat sign. What good will that do? What good will that do? Think of how this could revolutionize modern transportation. It could permanently eliminate traffic jams, reduce carbon emissions, prevent rising ocean levels. Okay, let's see it work then. All right, time to test it. Be careful. Here goes. It worked! I have to admit, I'm very impressed, Scuba. You've really created something quite, uh, not that way, baby. Wait, baby! Oh no! What happened? Where did baby go? You're just not supposed to go through the repeat signs that way. If you go through the repeat sign backward, it's possible that baby ended up going all the way back to the very first lesson. Oh my! Hello and welcome. I'm Joseph Hoffman, and in this lesson, we're going to learn some piano basics and how to play your very first song, Hot Cross Buns. So let's come to the piano to, huh? <laughs> Baby, what are you doing here? You know, finger puppets don't come until the end of the lesson. Baby, are you lost? Where's Princess? Uh, does anyone have a bottle? Help?